This is Lance Lichter for AA Today. Hydroxyethyl starch, is it safe? Two papers published in this month's issue of Anesthesia and Analgesia, The Effect of 6% Hydroxyethyl Starch, 130-0.4 on Renal Function, Arterial Blood Pressure, and Vasoactive Hormones During Radical Prostatectomy, a Randomized Controlled Trial, and Hydroxyethyl Starch, an Acute Kidney Injury in Orthotopic Liver Transplantation, a Single Center Retrospective Review, represent two different perspectives on the same question regarding fluid replacement with hydroxyethyl starch. The accompanying editorial asks the critical question, but is it safe, hydroxyethyl starch in perioperative care? In the first manuscript, the authors report on a small prospective randomized trial of hydroxyethyl starch versus normal isotonic saline, 0.9%, as intraoperative volume therapy for patients undergoing radical prostatectomy. 36 patients completed the trial. The investigators found no difference in biochemical markers for acute kidney injury between the two groups. The hydroxyethyl starch group appeared to be slightly better resuscitated, lower vasopressin levels, while the normal isotonic saline 0.9% group showed a trend towards lower estimated blood loss. In the second manuscript, the authors performed a complex retrospective analysis of 174 patients undergoing orthotopic liver transplantation, spanning a change in hospital availability from albumin to hydroxyethyl starch. Three groups, albumin only, hydroxyethyl starch only, and combined albumin and hydroxyethyl starch, were examined for evidence of acute kidney injury postoperatively. Patients receiving hydroxyethyl starch alone were at three times the risk of developing acute kidney injury than those receiving albumin alone. Propensity analysis revealed a dose-dependent risk for acute kidney injury in patients receiving hydroxyethyl starch. Interpretation of these mixed results should be guided by the thoughts of the editorialists. They note that the populations studied were not equivalent in risk. Only 2.5% of the prostate patients were transfused compared to more than 90% of the liver transplant group. In their opinion, the risk of hydroxyethyl starch is likely to be very small, unmeasurably so, in most low-risk populations, but care should be taken in those who have prior kidney disease or are at high risk for transfusion. Along with the authors of both studies, the editorialists argue for further prospective research focused specifically on the topic of perioperative volume replacement and appropriately controlled for goal direction. They note that many argue that starch should be used for resuscitation but not maintenance, a flaw of many protocolized studies. But if we can't agree on what constitutes optimum volume status, and we can't, then we can't agree about when resuscitation ends and maintenance begins. That makes it harder to study the question. Taken together, these three publications illustrate how much we still don't know about optimal fluid resuscitation in the operating room. For links and more, go to aatoday.org. That's aa, the number two, day.org. This is Lance Lichter.